it's uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Welcome to the Coates Hire Coffs Coast Rally Australia. This is round four of the championship and round ten of the World Rally Championship. Now with the rally fans jammed into the CVD for the ceremonial start, you could be forgiven for thinking we were somewhere in Europe. This is not Finland, not even Monte Carlo, but it's Coffs Harbour, northern New South Wales. And this is the WRC, the world's best drivers, teams, engineers all here, as well as Australia's best. Look at the line up in the crowd and in amongst it, first and second in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. This is our penultimate round of the series, a really important and crucial endurance round, and we cannot wait for a huge weekend of rallying. In our national competition, all eyes will be on Eli Evans and Glenn Weston. The championship leaders crashed heavily in the Armour All STP Power Stage earlier today, and they're in for the race of their lives just to get to the start line. It's not the position they wanted to be in, but they do lead the championship in spite of giving away the early bonus power stage points. Still, last round, Evans managed to secure good points to grab the championship lead from Molly Taylor. Simon Evans charged hard, but an off in the longest stage, speedy contractors stopped any chance of catching his younger brother. Water was a drama for the Citroens, and Tony Sullins was the biggest loser, drowning the DS3 on more than one occasion. Coppen in the other DS3 was drowning in his sorrows, unable to make an impression on the outright pace, but consistency did reward him with points in the end. Steve McKenzie never recovered fully from landing heavily in SS1, forced to nurse the Opticote Fiesta throughout the weekend. And Ashley James finally got his AJE Rally Sport Polo up to speed, just as the rally came to a close. Eli Evans leads by just eight points, but after the events of the power stage this weekend, that might well change. Adrian Coppen will need to watch Steve McKenzie, with a more measured approach to his rally this weekend, he could threaten for third. With eyes on the championship, though, it's Eli Evans who wants the top spot. But he needs a car, and he and Glenn Weston won't know whether that's happening till scrutineers tech check the rebuilt Citroen in the morning. Molly Taylor and Bill Hayes know they are a chance. They finally scraped into the power stage for the first time to grab a point for third in the high-tech balls Renault Clio. He might have missed the power stage, but a revitalised Adrian Coppen is confident this will be his and Erin Kelly's weekend. Tony Sullins and Julia Barclay would suggest otherwise after they nearly knocked off four times ARC champ Simon Evans in the final suggesting Sullins might have found the speed to match the Evans brothers. Simon might be languishing behind him on the championship leaderboard, but that will only spur him and Ben Searcy on to perform here at Rally Australia. Steve McKenzie missed the power stage, opting to sit all important uni exams, but he will line up in the morning alongside younger brother Brent in the Optico Fiesta. In the Australian four-wheel drive series, Mick Patton maintains his lead over Justin Dow and Mark Pedder, but both Gerald Schofield and Marcus Walcombe are still in the hunt for a series win. Mick Patton and Bernie Webb would have to be considered the title favourites. Consistency has been their friend all season, and another good showing this weekend will stand them in good stead. Marcus and Scott Walcombe return to Rally Australia after victory in round two and are possibly the best chance at challenging the Repco dominance, beating them back into third in the Armour STP Power Stage. Peter Roberts and Andrew Crowley are here in their first ARC for 2015. But they have good car speed and could easily be the upset this weekend after monstering the Power Stage final. There's a long list of hopefuls, including Justin Dow, Mark Pedder, Michael Bailey and Schofield, who already have runs on the board this season. 
It's a huge weekend with several of the ARC teams cross-entered into the WRC. In addition, there are a couple of notable competitors in the WRC this weekend. Cox's own Nathan Quinn in his hastily rebuilt and locally supported Group N Evo 9. And the current Australian rally champion, who's now entering his fifth rally on the world circuit this year. And is about to do it right here at Rally Australia. Dean Herridge caught up with Scott Petter for our ECB Insight. So it doesn't get any bigger than this, the World Rally Championship Service Park. And there wouldn't be an Australian driver in the field that wouldn't want to be in this position, in a World Championship garage. Our last year's Australian champ, Scott Petter, has done exactly that. So what does it feel like to live out a dream? Yeah, it's, it's sort of gone to another level here. Obviously, it's fantastic. You know, the whole year this year has been amazing, but uh, to come to uh, Rally Australia and be part of the M Squad, squad is uh, oh, it's ridiculous, to be honest. Oh, look, as tough as I thought it would be, you know, like they're the best in the world for a reason, and, um, you know, particularly this year, I, I picked the, the probably the hardest year um, in production championship history, so, uh, you know, to have the guys from Skoda there, and obviously um, regional cars are very, very difficult to beat on the tough, on the rougher rallies, um, as they will be here, so, uh, but, you know, no excuses, we had a great run in Finland, and hopefully uh, Australia is uh, a follow-on from that. But to be honest, I think it was the easiest event of the year, you know, it was just, uh, it was, um, there, there was gaps after the first sort of four or five stages, so you sort of you knew where you were, and, and it was we weren't cruising towards the end, but it was uh, you know nine and a half tenths to, to the finish. You know, talking about those finished roads that are unbelievable, uh, roads here and changing. You know, this just rally's changing a little bit in regards to road surface as well. Yeah, look, full, full credit to the rally organisers here. They've done a fantastic job. I was a bit critical of the first two stages last year, but the three on Friday are just magic. You know, you've got three shy stages and then you go into Newry, which is totally different. So I think it's probably the one, one of the most strategic rallies of the year. And, and certainly the, the, the guys at the top are saying that, you know, tyres and weather and different types of stages, it's going to throw up all sorts of uh, things. And all sorts of things will be happening tomorrow. No doubt when the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship kicks off from Coffs Harbour in just a few moments. Welcome back to the New South Wales North Coast, home of the Coats Hire Coffs Coast Rally, where the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship begins in earnest today. It's been a long night for Team Citroen after the events of the Armorall STP power stage yesterday. Uh, these things happen and we just got to move forward with it. I think um, it's, you know, he's been very fortunate in the power stages. It's always been tight. It's, it is a battle and, and the points are good to have if you can get them. It was just unfortunate yesterday that happened what it did. Um, now I'm thinking about getting the car to the first service and just really focusing on those first group of stages, which is... Uh, they're going to be tough. We've got Newry Long, which is a 30k stage, so um, I think as the rally goes on, the car's going to improve, and hopefully my pace does as well. A shift in priorities for Eli Evans and also for Steve McKenzie. Apparently, uh, uni exams come before uh, any rally commitments, so missing the power stage yesterday was no stress. Um, just have to take the first morning stages. Uh, pretty steady, um, I haven't even sat in the car since Queensland so even yeah just today we'll be again getting a feel of the car and getting it set up to these roads. Our most prominent rally export in recent years is relishing the chance to compete in a world rally on home soil. And I've never done this rally before, it's my first WRC in Australia, it's you know I know more about Finland or Rally GB than I do Coffs Harbour so um, yeah a little bit ironic but yeah obviously very excited to be able to compete in a WRC this year and it being at home. Buoyed by a very close final in the power stage, Tony Sullins is ready to get down to business. The car was missing and farting and carrying on, so really we, we probably could have had a win if we'd have tried. Uh, you know, if the car was a little bit quicker, so I hope we fix that problem. I haven't had a chance to test it, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with my speed. I'm happy with the car at the moment, so it's all confidence from me. What are we, fifth or sixth in the championship? We really need a good result here to put us back into the fight, so we just got to uh, you know, do the job and. Uh, Focus on you know, just the, the one corner at a time and doing, doing the best job that we can. Simon Evans' best is good enough through the opening stage in Tungan. Nearly eight kilometres of sweeping country roads reminiscent of the surface that made Kiwi roads such a favourite for rally drivers. 
that three and a half plus very long hug. Tony Sullins is four off the tank former's Honda, but comfortable with the car. Right four and a half. Eli Evans completes the stage just a second behind the other Citroen after a tentative start, half expecting gremlins from the hasty rebuild. It was tyre wear, though, he didn't expect. He and Glenn Weston will need to take even more care through SS2 to preserve the Kumos. Steve McKenzie is shocked by his tyre wear. They are fifth behind Adrian Coppin, but with half the rubber gone in just eight kilometres, tyres are their issue. Tony Sullins is quick through the longer Baker's Creek stage, but his tyre choice of 900s suits swept roads and it's not inspiring confidence. Still, he's home in 11 minutes, 18.6 seconds. Simon Evans, 0.1 behind him. Sullins celebrates his first stage win. We, the last stage, the first K and a half, I was all over the shop and really didn't have any rhythm. And it sort of come to me at the end. Uh, I put 900s on the car and that was probably a bad tyre choice, I think, because it's not a swept line at all out there and it's really slippy. But they probably held up all right. Considering the Citroen driver's reputation for looking after his tyres, that could well play into his hands. I'm just driving normal, so... <laughs> I get lots of, uh, lots of crowd reaction out there, so we're, they're enjoying the jazz and enjoying the way I'm driving it, so I'm enjoying the reaction as well. It's good fun and, look, I'm having a ball. It's just nice to be rallying. It's brakes, not tyres, that are on Molly Taylor's mind. She slips to eighth in stage. We basically lost brakes uh, in the, the last stages there, so um, but we can't really see why yet, so uh, it's a little bit disconcerting. Yes. She and Bill Hayes discover yeah, a again. leaking brake union that's letting air into the lines. There's very little right, time to fix again, it Bill. and no outside help allowed. Eventually, yeah. she gets enough pedal to continue through SS3 after regroup. <laughs> no. Steve McKenzie, meantime, has surprised himself. He's only a third of a second per K behind Simon Evans and well ahead of the championship leader. Eli Evans tries to drive conservatively after so much tyre wear in the first stage. But there is a penalty attached to conserving tyres and he drops to sixth in stage and two places outright to fifth. Coffs Harbour is always tough. Um, I did it two years ago and I didn't, didn't quite remember how tough it was but uh, we pushed through early on and the tyre uh, copped a big hit so that's done 25 k's now. I've got to ask another eight kilometres out of him. Fingers crossed. Taylor's arm is the start of SS3, just down the road from the pub with no beer. It harks back to a legend where the pub here was once cut off by floods and ran dry. Perfect story to write a song, and thanks to the late great Slim Dusty who did, the legend took off. Today, it's just a great vantage point. With her brakes sorted, Molly takes off, but she's still well off the pace and makes no impression on the top order. Eli bounces back with his first win for the rally. Conserving tyres last stage means he can now push. Five seconds clear of his brother Simon, who's running on canvas after another eight kilometres of competition. A great start to Tony Sullen's best ARC performance yet is thrown away in a heartbeat when he turns in too early. That's three and a half long. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 and it's spun us around, no big deal. Went to put it in reverse gear to back out, and because it's in a ditch and it was stuck, it's broken reverse gear, so I can't get out of the ditch. And um, that's pretty much it. If Sullins was the biggest loser, then Ashley James was the biggest winner. After struggling with handling and mechanical issues all season, he seems to be on top of them now. Just two seconds behind Simon Evans in third. A PB for 2015, he still has an engine oil leak to deal with. A bent control arm and turbo bolts coming loose causes dramas for Steve McKenzie through SS3. But it's aero that's the issue through Newry SS4. We've done a Scott Peter and left the boot open. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought that was a really good run. Um, at the end there, yeah, the eyes were starting to play havoc, but uh, Brent was on the notes really well and uh, everything just seemed to be working, even though there was a lot going on. And it was a good run. The brothers from Bendigo are second quickest behind Eli Evans, who has bolted on two new hard tyres for the final run before service. Things are different in the Honda, though. After using the bulk of his rubber to this point, Simon drops time, running down to the canvas. 
the rear tyres were bald. We did the front to rear before this, and there was already a little bit of canvas hanging out. So I uh, just thought I'd look after them and uh, just try to be as clean and as fast as possible. And I'm happy with that. Adrian Coppen is happy as well. Fourth this stage and holding down fourth outright. That was awesome. Like, that was really good. Like cars were going to go a few moments, but obviously we're finding that limit a bit. But got away with them. So let's go get this done and go again. Right from the start of SS1 in the four-wheel drive national series, Mark Petter's rally was spluttering. He and Glenn McNeil retreating to the safety of service and more analysing of the engine's computer. The Hastings concrete tanks entry of Peter Roberts had dominated the power stage and he made a solid start in the opening two stages. He kept Justin Dowell at bay in the Hyundai Proto, who wasn't suffering anything like the issues of Pedda setting up his new generation four-wheel drive. You know, I expected the roads to sweep up a lot more, but they're very, very loose and slippy, so we've got to be very cautious and careful to make sure we get through the whole rally. Mick Patton had the Repco rally car in touch, as did Marcus Walcombe in the Tregonia Seafoods Hero 9. Both title contenders stayed in touch, but the kid from South Australia, who struggled in past years in an underpowered two-wheel drive, was making a name for himself. Guy Tyler beat Patton in SS2 to claim third outright. Into right four. A moment in SS3 nearly brought the four-wheel drive leader unstuck, but running the 900s on the tighter, twistier stage wasn't right, and Peter Roberts was happy to make the end without surrendering much more time to stage winner Justin Dow. Marcus Walcom hadn't featured the way he wanted after clipping a bank in SS1 and ripping the intercooler pipe off, resulting in no turbo boost pressure. The temporary repair before SS4 didn't last the whole stage, but still, they smashed the opposition by 20 seconds. A faulty pump failed to deliver fuel or results for Peter Roberts, forced to nurse the Evo 6 right from the start, and eventually he and Andrew Crowley had to pull over. Mike Bailey was on a blinder. The morning had been pretty average, but a very tight check-in to start control on Newry had the BP ultimate entrant keyed up and he quickly caught and passed Roberts. Roberts and Crowley were out for the remainder of the day, but everyone else repeated the morning runs after service. All that, right after the break. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming to you from the Coffs Coast Rally Australia. After a great display of high-speed driving in Finland, Scott Petter had been hoping to cap it off with a similar result here in Australia, but it wasn't to be. I almost got through the gate backwards, but um, just clipped the right-hand front wheel, uh, literally coming backwards through onto the gate post, so I ripped the wheel off, and unfortunately that's the end of our day. No further rally action from Petter and Dale Moskett for day one, but they would be back in the WRC field tomorrow. For our ARC crews, though, it's a repeat run across Utungan, Baker's Creek, North Bank and Newry. Fast left three. Eli Evans sets the pace. Any issues he was expecting in the DS3 after the accident haven't materialised, and he leads the outright field home. Adrian Coppen's positive attitude this event is starting to pay off. He's third through Utungan, taking time out of Steve McKenzie, who's struggling with boost issues. A loose turbo doesn't help matters getting off the line, and the rest of his day is spent dealing with slow starts while the car gets up to speed. Simon Evans might have given time away to his younger brother in SS5, but he takes the longer Baker's Creek stage by two seconds. Mackenzie gets the better of Coppen by two, both pushing Molly Taylor and her Renault Clio down to fifth. Molly and Bill Hayes finish seven seconds clear of the next competitor, Harry Bates. While not registered for ARC points, Harry has previously proven the importance of finishing rallies, and the rookie from Canberra demonstrates why a little rally pedigree doesn't go too far astray. A good save, another lesson learned, and a bundle of experience under his belt. Taylor forces him down to sixth outright, but he's punching well above his weight. Eli grabs back the top position through North Bank. This time, though, 
It's not his brother on his tail. Steve McKenzie is five behind, but his issue is keeping the car together. The control arm continues to come loose every stage, despite being retightened. Again through the long new restage, it's Evans McKenzie 1-2. The Citroen has the measure of the Fiesta by half a second a K. Dust is a big factor through this stage. It hangs without wind to clear a path. Even with two minute gaps, it's tricky and Molly Taylor is thankful to make the finish. It's Simon Evans though, who elevates McKenzie and Taylor into second and third respectively. What is that? And John, we are kaput. Reese Pinter had been circulating, minding his own business, in a slower entry level R2 spec Ford Fiesta at the back of the field, along with another ARC rookie, Steve Raymond, from Victoria. Their battle is not to win, but to gain valuable experience in an international event. And all that's okay until a faster car has a problem and starts behind you. The frustration of the dust is nothing. Starting seven minutes late has cost Coppen over one minute in penalty time and he slips down the leaderboard. Justin Dow changed the ride height in the proto at service. And while the roads were swept, it was others who took the advantage. The 2011 rally champ having to settle for third in the first two repeat stages. Marcus Walcombe took the honours in Utungan, four seconds ahead of Guy Tyler in the earlier Evo. JJ Hatton was up to fifth for all the afternoon repeats. For a bloke who entered his first ever rally here last year, the crazy Irishman had plenty sitting up and taking notice. He'd been on track for a top five finish this morning until a moment on the slippery surface that squashed the intercooler pipe. But he was back on the game and on the pace, beating many of the regulars, including Gerald Schofield, the Fibertech medical boss. SS6 and Guy Tyler won his first ARC stage and sat just nine seconds behind Dow. Dow and co-driver Tony Fever hit back through the final stage to win by 0.9 of a second from the Walcombe brothers. Importantly, the Proto would increase its overnight hold on the 777 Rally Sport Evo 5 by 15 seconds. The second of the three days competition from the Coates Hire Coast Coast Rally coming up right after the break. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship being held at Coffs Harbour. It's day two of a three day endurance competition for our competitors and yesterday's times continue to count. Finishing every stage and every day is paramount and Simon Evans knows that all too well. We'd set ourselves up to have you know, good tyres and have a real crack on the 30 kilometre stage and uh, eight k's in and just dropped the valve and uh, yeah. She ended up destroying the piston and putting the leg out of bed, so no more. And John. Tony Sullins is back and full of confidence about his experience on day one. Those three stages were virgin stages to all of us. We just wrote our notes and drove on them, so it was a good indication of how good I could be if I've with no experience and no one else had any experience on those stages. So, oh yeah, I was, the positives are awesome. Eli Evans is surprised to be leading the rally after his huge crash on Thursday. It was a, a proud moment for myself and um, to basically repay the boys. So, you know, we're only 33% of the way through. We've got two more days. So, um, but yeah, it was a, a load off my shoulders and uh, you know, I could take a deep breath then and actually relax like I am now and refocus again. Molly Taylor can't work out her position after a frustrating day one. We were, we were lucky to be in third, really, considering the day that we had. Um, but, you know, we just need to keep our head down and focus on what we're doing today. Uh, you know, the driving in the afternoon felt really good and, and the car feels good, but we're just struggling a bit uh, on pace for some reason. So um, I don't know what we can do about that right now. Today is the mother of all stages for this event, 50 kilometres across Nambucca that many consider to be one of the best roads in rallying. It's Rally Australia's signature stage, and everyone will be concerned with one thing, tyre management. That's the big question, isn't it? So, yeah, much like the other guys, I'm sure we'll just be uh, taking the first half of the stage uh, reasonably easy and seeing how the car feels from there. 
Mackenzie takes 32 minutes and 52 seconds to complete the 50 kilometres. He's not sure if he was on the right tyre, but he's still second fastest, 20 seconds off the pace, and that despite the car stopping mid-stage. Eli Evans' experience here two years ago saw him finish with tyres down to the canvas, but he accounts for himself well, fastest on the road to take the stage. Look, I took it easy, probably the first 25k, and then um, I said to Weston, I'm going to push on a little bit now. But it was probably in the wrong areas, in a tight section, so I had to back off again. So maybe I left my sprint a little bit late. I don't know how much tyre we got on the front, but um, I had grip the whole way through, which is disappointing because it means there's still a little bit left in the tyre. Tony Sullins matches Evan's time over the opening five kilometres, but then his luck gets stuck. For the remaining 45 kilometres, somehow he manages to only lose 40 seconds, but it's not the start to day two he wants. Don't four left, 20. A spin for Adrian Coppen doesn't stop him being third fastest, but heat is having an effect. I think the tyres are shot, like it was struggled massively in that probably last 10, 15 k to put power down this wheel spin city. <laughs> By contrast, Molly Taylor is upbeat in the high-tech oils Renault Clio. Yeah, I really enjoyed it actually. It went, uh, went faster than I thought, but um, yeah, we made a few changes to the car in service. It feels a bit better. We still, yeah, got a long way to go, but you know, at least our, our gap's coming down a bit, so at least it's a positive sign. In regroup at Bowerville, there's time to reflect on tyre choice and a bit of Kumo Tech Talk with Dean. Every round we talk about the challenge of our Kumo control tyres at each event, and this one is no different. Teams have capped to 22 tyres over the course of the weekend, which sounds like plenty, but when you've got 300 competitive kilometres, and particularly when the teams have just come off the Nambucca stage, over 50 kilometres, have a look at this one. Steve McKenzie and Brent McKenzie, they're changing their tyres now before they go into the next regroup and service the stages. They've got to make a choice between what they've taken off, which look at this one here, well worn. There's absolutely nothing left on that tyre at all. So they now have carried two spares in the car. They're going to use them. They're second hand from yesterday, but you can see way better than what they've had on the car currently. So tread block borne right down, no traction. He said to us at the end of the stage that he wore them out a bit early. So you've got to try and manage them through the stage. Temperature plays a part, the pressures. And of course, because they're not at service, the service crew can't help them here. They've got to do all the work themselves with the tools they have in the car. So it's not just about driving and co-driving, got to do a little bit of work as well. I thought, I don't know if I drove fast enough, but when we got out to change our tyres, um, it's proven that we've got canvas coming out on the left-hand side and the right-hand sides, the tyres at about 5%, so it's a challenge, but it looks like we absolutely nailed it. So if I can repeat that this afternoon, I'll be very, very happy. The Fibertech Medical Citroen is now selecting gears and while Tony Sullins doesn't have a definitive answer, he's pressing on with new tyres. If the car's right, I don't want to go to the next stage with a disadvantage, so I put the tyres on anyway. If the car's not right, we've, we've, we've already lost time in the last one now, we can't make things up, so we just drive as fast as we can. It pays off, just one second off Eli through Valor. But the gearbox issue is heat related and the car jams in second for the final two kilometres. An amazing result, but the hydraulic pump for the selector is getting worse. And with no replacement available, Tony Sullins and Julia Barkley take early leave from Rally Australia. Adrian Coppen is 15 seconds off Sullins' time, but it could have been much slower. I saw it coming, I knew this was going to be up and didn't. I think we're just too far, so just shut us up too much. Then we sort of, well, if there was no gut on the outside of the road, I reckon we would have come back down on our wheels and kept going, but the gut ran out of road and she tripped her over. Good TV. Molly Taylor has been struggling with pace. Each stage feels OK, but the times aren't reflected on the leaderboard. Second stage, we really wanted to test the changes that we made and, and we made a, a, a good step forward. We're still, you know, still scratching our head for that, for that last bit because, you know, we were, we were trying hard, but uh, we've just got to keep keep doing that and if we've made a gain that, that's one more positive step. Not much change for the repeat of Nambucca. She's still just over 30 seconds behind the fastest car on the stage. But there is a change in who is fastest. Steve McKenzie demonstrates that without his engine dying first pass, he might well have won the stage both times. This time, six seconds in front of Eli Evans and still dealing with a loose bolt in the control arm. 
The final stage of the ARC outright competition is Valor. Under lights and Mackenzie's troubles get worse. The bolt in the control arm has snapped in transport and he's forced to nurse the car through to the end of the final stage. Eli's hunting possums in the trees. The light bar brackets were damaged in the accident and they're pointing everywhere but the road. I can't keep doing this. Driving his almost standard Toyota Corolla, Harry Bates is home just 0.9 of a second behind the championship leader in a brilliant display of night driving. Certainly a glimpse of someone we'll expect to see a lot more of in rallying. There was no night stage for the four-wheel drive national series, but the two passes of Nambucca were game changers for everyone. Leader Justin Dow's chances of winning were dashed when he caught the dust of Ashley James, who was travelling on the road immediately in front. Then every oh, you For some reason, the rally-safe push to pass either didn't work or wasn't seen, and the frustration builds to boiling point in the Hyundai Proto. The Walken brothers win the stage 13 seconds in front of Guy Tyler. Now with Dow's demise, Tyler is leading the four-wheel drive National Series Rally. Pedder brought the maxi car out for what was another test session, but bailed at the spectator point after losing confidence in the car. McPatton held down third outright after a typically consistent fifth but over such a long stage, the Repco Evo 10 was 1 minute 20 behind Walken. Gerald Schofield was jumped by Michael Bailey, who was almost a minute quicker in the BP Ultimate entry. JJ Hatton was also a winner, up to fourth outright. In refuel, things only got worse for Dow, dealing with his issue of a slower driver failing to pull over. 12 k's we followed him for, and and had a couple of really serious near misses um, with officials in their cars because uh, we just couldn't see the road and there's barriers and stuff and just not acceptable. Amidst the distraction, he and co-driver Tony Fever check in to refuel 10 minutes early. If their dust penalty wasn't enough, the penalty for checking in early was minute for minute and they plummeted to 12th. Dowell elected to pull the pin on what, up until then, had been another successful outing for the new Proto. But he couldn't help but prove a point first, completing the repeat of Nambucca in record time to demonstrate the time he should have got previously. It was a win by five seconds from Marcus Walkham, but it was the last time the Hyundai Proto was seen at Rally Australia. Nambucca too was unkind to our rookie from South Australia, and his fairy tale run ground to a halt when the head gasket blew. But Andrew Penny's wide berth through the early part of Nambucca doesn't stop him from recording the fifth fastest time. Walcombe assumed the lead from Mick Patton with JJ Hatton up to third. Nothing would change through the final stage of the day in the four-wheel drive national series. The final day of competition in the East Coast Bull Bars ARC, coming up after the break. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. This penultimate round of the series is being run at Coffs Harbour at Coates Higher Rally Australia. After two drama-filled days of action, all competitors in the outright competition were nursing various injuries. Eli Evans didn't expect to be fastest. He was nursing a bruised and hastily repaired car from the power stage and was not backing himself for a round win. After a cracking day yesterday, Steve McKenzie was all about getting the Opticoat Fiesta to the end without the control arm breaking. Molly Taylor was lamenting the lack of speed in her high-tech oils entry, but she did sneak in front of the Fiesta through SS13, buck along by 0.7. The battle-scarred DS3 Citroen of Coppen was fourth, with brakes fading mid-stage that never recovered for the day. And Buck Along was short-lived for Harry Bates. Clipping a stump spelled an early end to an otherwise very successful debut in Rally Australia. No positional changes through wedding bells, but in the short 6K stage that is settles, Molly Taylor and Bill Pays have their moment in the spotlight. 
It wouldn't change the outright result, but a stage win is a stage win, and it's theirs by 1.6 seconds. After more work on the maxi car, Mark Petter and Glenn McNeil rejoined for the final day. And even with ongoing issues that need some serious consideration, they won all but the last stage. JJ Hatton hung on to four through Bucker, but a second turbo blew, slowing his progress. And Michael Bailey's rally was on track up until he caught JJ. And then it was decidedly off track. Ironically, he and Matt Harriet were up into third outright when they passed Hatton, but then promptly handed it back. The Irishman had blown his chance at retaining a podium position, but Gerald Schofield, ever the consistent and persistent, welcomed the move up. If ever there was a story of persistence, it was Mark Beard, driving a naturally aspirated Subaru RS to fourth, displacing JJ Hatton and his blown turbo even further down the leaderboard. Mark Beard and Sam Hill also won the P5 category against turbo versions of their own Subaru. While the major places were locked down before the final stage repeats, Paul Newman and Tom Clark fought out for positions right to the end. By buck along two, Newman and son Sean were two seconds in front. But Clark managed to drag his failing clutch up enough to pip the father-son combo by one second at the end of the day. Adam Bench was as rookie as they come, having won a prize to drive in Rally Australia. He'd been coached by the masters at rallyschool.com.au and had one of the best sitting alongside in co-driver instructor Darren Masters. For Adam, this was a long way from home in Daniloquin and he only had one thing on his mind. I wasn't looking to set fast stage times or anything like that. Just wanted to finish the round, slowly pick up the pace. Um, yeah, if I could get off the last place, fair enough, I'd be happy with that, you know. But sort of the St Stephen Bradbury approach, I guess, yeah. For the record, he wasn't last and, in fact, was an impressive fifth in stage on the final stage of the rally. So Mick Patton continues to lead the four-wheel drive national series, but keep in mind, it's the best three events from the season, which mathematically leaves the competition wide open till the final round. Still to come, the run to the finish for the outright contenders in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming up in just a few moments. Welcome back to the Coates Hire Coffs Coast Rally. While eyes were on the 10th round of the WRC, Eli Evans has been raising eyebrows. He still leads the national championship in a great comeback after crashing pre-event. Yeah, I think we were 20 something seconds up on Molly, but she's up the pace in the last two stages. I think she's found herself in a battle with Steve McKenzie for today's heat, so uh, it'll be interesting. I'll see if I, I'll do, try and do the same thing through, through Bucker again and uh, see if we win it. Molly Taylor's frustrations in the last couple of days have left her perplexed. But this morning hasn't been all bad, and a win through the last stage has lifted her spirits. You know, one of the main differences is the stages are just so fast this afternoon and we're not having to you know, slow down and accelerate out of corners. That, that's the only difference, and, and I've been driving the same and the times are better, so... There is a fight on for leg honours today, and Molly is in that fight with Steve McKenzie. But he's got other things on his mind. Yeah, leg points for us isn't uh, worth the risk because uh, the event points are obviously far more uh, valuable uh, than a single leg. So, yeah, definitely just staying in it for the rally. He gives 10 seconds away to Molly through Bucker Long 2. But with well over a minute lead in the rally, McKenzie is about protecting his second outright. Reese Pinter arrived from Canberra eager to do his best in an international event. Along the way, he's had his fair share of frustrations, but he's very excited now the end is in sight. Pretty proud. Um, in Canberra, we're a lot further away to the bigger guys, and then yesterday through Nambucca, we were, just, we were under five seconds of K off Eli, so we're making inroads very closely, so given my limited experience, I'm pretty stoked, especially with shift problems. We had the starter motor blow last night, so we've had everything and we've got one to go, so we'll just try and get through that. 
Just when we thought we'd seen enough upsets from one event, Ashley Jones pokes his head up in the Volkswagen Polo to claim second in stage behind Eli Evans. Even with oil dripping onto the clutch, he is just five seconds behind Eli after 10 kilometres. Take nothing away from Eli Evans though, no team this round is more deserving of a victory after the events of last Thursday. Eli Evans and Glenn Weston do the team proud, bringing the Citroen DS3 home in first place. So it's fitting that this round's Kumo Spirit of the Rally Award goes to boss Ron Kremen and Team Citroen for the mammoth task in getting their DS3 back in the game in less than 24 hours. There it is, Eli Evans on top again. A great reward for Steve McKenzie as well though in an international event. Molly might have collected some bonus points for the final day's win, but she settles for third in the rally. Adrian Coppin and Ashley James finish fourth and fifth respectively. Our STP standout for this rally? Let's see what Triple Australian Rally Champion Cody Crocker has to say on that. And Rally Australia is always a really tough event and it brings out the best in so many people. And the STP Standout Award this weekend goes to a young guy, Guy Tyler, who's actually stepped up from two-wheel drive and had a lot of battles over the years. And this year in the four-wheel drive series was actually leading the national four-wheel drives. Uh, unfortunately went out with, a, with an engine problem, but to do that I think is a standout award. So the STP Standout Award goes to Guy Tyler. How does everything pan out in championship terms? Well, Eli Evans has now extended his lead over Molly Taylor to 31 points. Third place will no doubt be a battle between Ford and Citroen come the final round. And that round is just weeks away, so hopefully enough time to rest bodies and repair cars in readiness for the decider. That decider will be Scouts Rally SA from October 23rd to 25th to cap off the 2015 East Coast Boulevards ARC season. For everything you need to keep up with the world of rally, just go to rally.com.au. For the team, I'm Greg Rust. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Better Suspension, Armour, STP, Co Tire, Can Am, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.